Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Pico Alexander about the honeymoon, which is available now on digital platforms. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. I mean, this is crazy. You were officially the last pop, like pop turn of guest of 2022, which is crazy. So hey, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up good. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, from start to finish, this movie is just tons of fun with so many kind of elements thrown in. When you read a script for this that has the comedy and the action and everything, is that kind of what you're basically kind of anticipating? Like, wow, like the audience is in for a ride. Are you focused on the character? Like, what's that mindset when you're reading the script for this specifically? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the script was really, really funny. Uh, like, laugh out loud funny, which, you know, it happens, but not often. So yeah. um, I had the sense... Like, oh man, if I get this thing, it's gonna be it's gonna be a real hoot, you know? Yeah. It's gonna be fun to film. Yeah. Um and and I mean and I immediately thought, wow, I wonder who this guy is that they're gonna get to play Bav. because uh, <laughs> that's such a funny, funny part, you know? And like my thing, I just get to sort of react to him most of the time. It's interesting too, because you know, you read scripts for this. Do you notice that The Honeymoon is arguably like a genre-bending movie like before like kind of officially going in and filming it? Because like you said, it's really funny, but especially people got a chance to kind of see the trailer and everything. It's like it's got kind of that action, kind of like, oh, my God, like high stakes and everything aspect to it as well, right? Like it is a genre-bending movie. Yeah, no, it's true. I guess it does. I, I would, I guess, no then. I guess I was like, you know, didn't realize how much physical stuff there was that we would have to do how much fast driving and climbing up and down things and running around um it was definitely like a phys really physical shoot and i don't think i was really expecting that no you look at this you look at other projects you worked on like home again i find it interesting because this movie as well similar to those it's like you have there's like ensemble cast and then there's like the kind of the i would say more kind of like intimate ensemble cast where it's the same three or four people that consistently have you know screen time together and everything happening in this one what is that mindset like is it all storytelling for you or whether you work on something where you're working with like a cast of like 13 14 people or like you're working on something like this where it's mainly you know like three people what does it all does it change a little bit or is it all storytelling to you um i think it depends you know if if, if you have scenes that include 13 actors let's say yeah. then that that's going to be a, a lot you know a bigger day it's going to be more complicated mm -hmm. um to make sure that you get everybody's coverage um usually even in those large ensemble groups though um the, t the scenes themselves like tend to be smaller so yeah. you know like it's usually going to be like a scene between two or three people yeah. for the most part unless it was unless it's like a big set piece so so um in that way, I would say it's similar. Um, I think probably the the main difference is just in terms of like who you're spending your time with. Exactly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Talk about working with this cast specifically for the honeymoon. I mean, you got to work with some really talented and incredible and incredibly funny people as well that we've seen in other kind of things. But we've also seen these actors in situations where they're not comedies, right? You know, so like, I'm just wondering, what was it like working with this cast specifically? Yeah, I would say everybody in the cast is terrific. Uh, and while, you know, maybe they sort of seem like a traditional comedic actor, um, I'd say everybody there has got the chops to, to do just about anything. Yeah. So um, it was really lots of fun. Um, you know, the mo most of my scenes were with Awesome Chowdhury, who I got to, uh, you know, really get to, get to know his work a little bit before, during the shoot. And then actually a large chunk of like my watching of Awesome's work was after we finished. Yeah. And um, that guy's just like a titan, man. You know, he's on another level and uh, so, so funny. Um, you know, I've grown up watching bloopers from like uh, TV shows, you know, comedy TV shows and movies. And, and I feel like that's like my favorite stuff to watch. Yeah. Um, and I always, you know, watching them, I always think, man, like, wouldn't it be awesome to one day work on something where uh, it, 
it would be this much fun where you're like, you know, cracking up uh, during a take. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of pressure when the camera's rolling and uh, sure. you know, everybody stopped what they're doing. They've set up the shot and it's like, you know, they, they want you to get it right. So to laugh, um, something's gotta be really funny. And, um, and awesome would just crack me up every time. It started getting to a point where I was like, man, this, this is, you know, I'm <laughs> right, not like worried. Work. I'm Let's not going to be able to get work, through right? it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Well, it's interesting. I think the movie does a really good job, Pico, of every movie has to set it up, right? Like we're meeting these characters for the first time, right? And everything. So there's kind of the setup. And then I feel like there's moments of this movie that don't really waste time. They just kind of get into it and it's kind of this high octane kind of like, how are they going to get through this? You know what I mean? And everything. Does that excite you as well? Looking at the different paces of scripts as well? Because you have those slow burns. You have those setups. Don't get me wrong. This movie does have the setup because it needs it, right? Because of what happening with you and Awesome and everything. But then it kind of switches gears to this like high, like octane energy pace film, which I love as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dean Craig, who wrote and directed it, who, uh, I mean that really, it was really the, 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 the guy, the guy's a genius. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love his writing and I love the way that he worked with us. Um, it, it's one of those, I watched it the other day and, the movie just starts, you yeah. know, and, and it, there's really little in the way of exposition. Uh, and for, as a viewer, I prefer, I prefer no exposition. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I like to just get to it and, and um, just have it sort of unraveling, you know, and not have feel like I have to like earn the exciting part of a movie 30, 40 minutes in. hundred um, percent. No, no, that, I mean, sometimes, like, you kind of have no choice, though, because it's just literally, like, but there are, it's funny you mention that, because there are movies and TV shows where you're literally kind of thrown in without kind of as much kind of exposition and, like, explanation, and you just have to kind of, like, I guess, figure it out yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, you know, there are movies that do it really well, and then there are movies that, you know, you want, like, the slow burn of the exposition, and some are good for different, they're, you know, good for different reasons, but... um. But you know what I but, mean with uh, this yeah. one, right? There is that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With this type of comedy where so much is happening, and it is moving so fast, and we're moving from England to Italy, and then to, you know, it's just, like, constantly a forward motion and really, really high stakes... Uh, I think it's it's done really marvelously in the script. I think Dean like navigates that well. Um, Alexander, and it actually is like oh yeah. yeah, sorry. So go, what go are ahead, you gonna go say? Ahead. What are you gonna say? Sorry, finish up. Th that the fact that it is a smaller group, like Dean's last movie, yeah. Love Wedding Repeat, and even like the classic that he's known for, Death at a Funeral. It's a much larger cast. There's a lot more going on, and a lot more that you have to weave together. This is like pretty tight. Yeah. And so it allows for like, you know, kind of longer scenes and uh, for more to happen. But uh, he still has to move the move the plot along rather quickly. You know, I had like a last question for wrap up, but very quickly, based on what you just said, I have another one off the cuff here. Interesting, right? Because all those projects you kind of mentioned, including the honeymoon, they're comedies with these kind of serious undertones where these characters are going through a lot of like figuring out and self-reflection and kind of like high stakes, right? Where like, you know, they might be in danger if they don't figure stuff out. You know what I mean? More of this one compared to the other ones that you mentioned. But yeah, have yeah, you yeah, always yeah, looked at stuff. comedy with like a serious undertone lens? Because I feel like a lot of our favorite comedies always have those like serious undertones, right? Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, like I feel like any genre um, needs to be like in some way just a compelling drama <laughs> with then its own genre up top. I, if, if like just to have some kind of soul, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, um, absolutely. Yeah. Like if it's not making you think about it, it's not, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. To, I like it to be a little serious too. For sure. Uh, Pico Alexander is a storyteller. That's what you do. What is the best thing about being a storyteller specifically in your opinion? Well, you get to be surrounded by other storytellers. And, uh, and I think, I guess I set off to be a storyteller because uh, I was affected so positively by so many different stories. That's a great answer. You just hit that out of the park. That was a really good answer. Hey, dude, I freestyled it. You know? 
<laughs> did I do okay? <laughs> you did no, you did so well. And uh, yeah, no, people have a chance to uh, catch the honeymoon available on digital platforms now. It recently dropped, uh, recently dropped, I think, last week in December. So people could check that out. Great film, you're amazing in it. Pico, thank you so much for your time. It was really great chatting with you, man. Yeah, likewise, man. Thank you so much for having me. And happy new year and everything. And again, this is the last official interview of 2022 for pop alternative so it's pretty crazy so happy holidays i'm glad i could close it out with you and i wish you the best 2023 oh you too man thank you so much well this has been pop turner youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes you can of course catch pico alexander in the honeymoon available now on digital platforms till next time this is pico and pd beats signing off happy holidays everyone thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.